Good morning, everyone. It's Autumn Maria Gestrada. I am not having the best of days. I'm losing my voice, believe it or not. You can kind of hear it like, uh, but that's not why I'm getting on this show. I was going to start something different on my channel. As many of you know, Radical Books and Politics does book reviews by independent and traditionally published writers. And I have guests on, which I hope if you want to come on my show, I would be happy to have you. But one thing I'm trying to start because it hasn't quite gelled is to do live streams. But on, on certain days, I, I was thinking Saturdays in the afternoon. Not quite sure. Yeah, I have to sort that out. But this is uh, the first one that I'm doing. I'm doing it on a Tuesday morning because I know people are on because they're responding to my Facebook post. And I thought maybe they might want to hop on for a little bit. So what's a flash review and what is a flash book discussion? I just thought I would do a basic uh, review. Normally when I do a book review, I talk about what I like about a book in terms of being a writer and a reader. And then I thought we could discuss it. If people have read the book, that'd be great. If you have a recommendation for a book, I'd be happy to take that. And a lot of us who are in the group called Pen in the City, which I will link below, Pen in the City is a, a creative writing room run and it also has like artists, of course, poets, you know, um, readers, but uh, it's a really great community that um, is supportive. And one of the main goals of Penn in the City is to help each other market books. So I think this would also be a great f way for an independent writer to get his book out there, right? Especially people like it and they have great things to say about it. Let me put that. Oh, I can spell. I can spell. Oh, I can't spell. <laughs> so, ah, very good. So it's there. Okay, yeah, I'm looking at this. I also have to not thank, um, real quick before I start, um, D. Neiman. Oh my gosh, I totally spaced his name. I, I really, I've, I've been really sick since Sunday and I'm, I'm recovering, but, uh, sorry, I'll stop complaining. So, but I was on, on a, a stream of his. I think yesterday or maybe maybe Monday. Oh, yesterday was Monday. Duh. Like yesterday or the day before. It was a, like a two in the morning stream. He was streaming from Mexico and he had about 45 people on and he was just streaming from his hotel. It wasn't like something. Um, it wasn't his normal YouTube studio. I'm going to take my glasses off. Not the normal YouTube studio. And basically he's stuck in Mexico right now because he can't go back to Thailand. So that, that was... Um, that was sad, but what he was talking about was the purpose of his live stream is to just hang out. And I was like, yeah, like, you know, that intuitively as somebody who probably watches YouTube channels and goes on live streams, but that's what I thought I wanted to make these, uh, these, uh, live stream sessions. So, and also useful for you because in talking about what I like about a book about a reader, you don't just get to know the content. Um, I also review it as what it, I like about it as a writer. And maybe we could learn about our craft or our preferences. So this is one that I did a soft review on it. I, I couldn't find it in my YouTube video. So I must, I must have done that on Facebook. But I came across this book, um, A Shamer's Daughter by Lene Heberball. I'm sorry, Lene, if I'm ruining your last name. But uh, it's also a prime movie. And I highly recommend both. The, the movie was very close to the book. But um, I, I don't even know. I don't know how I came across this book. I think I was just kind of like going through Amazon and I was interested in the title um, and saw the dragon, which is central to the plot. But what I like about this book as a, as a, well, let me go back. I'm going to start going into what I like, what I don't like. Also, I just want to say that I don't do rant reviews. I don't, I don't like that. I mean, if you're not going to like a book, then shut the hell up. Who, who want, nobody wants to hear your rant, you know? Um, but let me talk about the main characters. Or maybe a little rewind. So the book takes place in this, um, I don't want to say magical, because magic does exist, in this kingdom, which is, you know, Lene is from Denmark, but the the place is called Dunark. I really didn't make glasses or context. And it's um it's during the time of kings and queens, and and there there's the main protagonist um who is an outcast in her village. So it starts off with this young girl who wants to play with these other girls and they don't want to play with her. You're not sure why, you know, something's up, but nobody wants to play with her. Her name is Dina Tonner and nobody likes her. They, they avoid her. And you're not sure why until a few scenes later when she gets into a fight with a little girl and, and um, Dina makes the little girl feel ashamed, very deeply ashamed of herself. And so as it turns out, Dina is a daughter of a, of a like it says, a shameless daughter her mother is Melusina um, Tonere, who is a renowned shamer. Um, 
And so what these women do is that they are tasked with, like the king will call on them or they'll be called in to determine whether someone is guilty or not. And they'll literally look into a person's soul. Sorry, I forgot to turn off the mic. They'll look into a person's soul and have them reflect on their guilt and, and their actions. And that um, that's why nobody wants to look her in the eye or play with her. And um, so it starts off with the great like tension you know, so I, I like that as a reader very much. Then there's also a Nico Ravens. Nico Ravens is this kind of, um, it kind of reminded me a little bit of, of the Henry, uh, Henry the fourth, I think it was, who was kind of a, a drunkard, you know, but he reminded me of, of, um, you like the, the, he's a drunkard, he's a prince, right. And he gets accused of killing, um, uh, his father, his stepmother and, the baby, a sibling, right? And so that that's where the opening scene is, or one of the opening things that happens, not the opening scene, but the opening thing that forces the, the mother to go to the castle because she's being summoned to determine whether he's guilty or not of these crimes. And there are other characters, but I think these are... Oh, I forgot about the villain. Uh, and I can't think of his name. So th there's a villain who is the brother of... um. Actually, let me look this up. Okay, the brother... Let me see. The brother of Nico. Oh my gosh. I thought I I haven't read the book in a while, but uh the bro the brother is uh is vile and I can't think. I'll put it in the comments because I can't think of who the Oh, Lord Draken. Oh that's what yeah, Draken, that's right. Lord Draken, D R A K N is the uh like the, the main antagonist and um the person who's going to make Dina's life miserable. So I, as a reader, I, I mean, I love fantasy. I love reading about dragons and princesses. It's not quite a traditional, well, it's not, well, what's traditional anymore, but it, it does follow a royal family and the struggle for power. And Lord, whose name I can't think of, Dunark, what's his name? Oh, Draken. Let me write that down. Lord Draken, um, he, he gets put into place although he's a bastard, the king. And as a reader, I was kind of suspicious of him from the get-go. There was something about him I just didn't quite like. And and uh, Lene does a really great job of doing subtle subtleties with the language, you know. Um, so <sighs> it's got adventure in it. It has dragons. And, and the unique thing, I don't want to spoil it for you, but the way that Lene incorporated dragons was not how I had seen them incorporated before. They're not the fire breathing dragons of um, like say Game of Thrones, but they are powerful creatures and they're to be feared, right? Cause they're very violent and brutal, but um, they, they have magical properties that are a little, a little different, you know, but also central to the plot. And, um, and there's also in, in the story itself, um, almost like a love story between Nico and um, the protagonist, but not quite because she's young. So what happens is that she gets called in to determine whether um, Nico is guilty of this horrible crime and the shamer will not accuse him because she doesn't think he did it. There's a lot of things that he's done wrong, but that's not one of them. And the, and the Lord Drac Draken doesn't want to hear it. So he comes back to the house, you know, rides for a couple days or however long and takes Dina with him. And this is where her adventure begins. She leaves and goes to, to the castle where Nico is imprisoned. And she also determines that he is not guilty. So then you find out that um, Lord Draken obviously killed the father and, and the um, the stepmother and the, the baby. And uh, they send an assassin to kill Dina and Nico. And the plan was to blame Dina or something like that. But they escape, and so then their to, their together adventure begins. Their adventure together begins, and it's just this um this ongoing storyline about them trying to elude Lord Draken, and um Nico dealing with his inadequacies because he he is a drunkard. You know he made unwise choices, and so he does have things to be ashamed of, but not murder. So all this um, made it for a really quick read. And I got to say that I'm a, I'm a snob when it comes to movie adaptations, but the movie was beautiful. I could watch that movie over and over and over again. There is a part two based on the Shamer Signet, which is this book that I hope to finish reading and reviewing in a 
probably not anytime soon because I have other books to review. But I, I didn't really, I made a mistake. I watched the, the sequel, you know, uh, the movie, and I didn't care for it. So I hope it doesn't color how I look at the book. So that's what I liked about it as a reader. Again, I liked the play on Dragons, um, the almost love story, the pacing, the adventure. It was very good. And that is actually very similar to what I like about it as, as a writer. Um, but the mystery of who is Dina's father, because you don't know, was compelling. Like it doesn't have a lot of little story, like sub storylines or subplots. It mainly focuses on Dina and Nico getting away from Lord Draken, right? And then trying to expose his crime, which is which is God's the most beautiful climax in the book. Um, so this is pretty pretty amazing in that regard. And um, it, it was chock full of action and adventure for a short young adult book. I mean, the the book itself is only about two hundred pages, but. Let me see. Hold on. In this nine by six, 233 pages or so, but it's pretty damn amazing. You know, they're all about the same length. Um, great. Also, uh, let me see what else. The writer. Oh, the characters were all very well developed, and the dialogue was outstanding. I mean, she she has her craft very tight, and I just would recommend it um, for all those reasons. I gave it an A plus review, A plus for sure, and um, and I just wish I could write just so beautifully like you could visualize the towns there was uh, a, a scene where uh, Dina and Nico go to his former teacher's house and he's an apothecary and the way she described the chemicals and the setting was just gorgeous you know and and that that's a kind of craft that Lene has and she's also really admirable because she's not um English isn't her first language but she translates all her books herself and she did a really great job I was like well good job you you know awesome so i hope that was helpful um i do plan on, on uh, reviewing the shamer signet next and oh two the i was complaining to the publisher because when i read the book about i think it was two years ago there were no kindle versions but the kindle versions have come out since then i think they came out last september so you can get the shamer's daughter series um on kindle it's i, I don't think there's audible books i love audible books but i do recommend it i do recommend it for young adults um and, and kids, my son is 10, and I think he would enjoy this book very much. He liked the movie, you know, so I don't know. So hopefully this is helpful. And nobody is on to do a book discussion, but in the future, what I hope to do is to maybe get a group of people to come on to talk about a book um, of choice. And I'm not opposed to reading a new book. I just need some time. So if you want me to review your book or include it into one of my flash reviews slash flash discussions, we say that five times fast. That I'd be happy to do that. All right. I don't care if you're an independent writer or a traditionally published writer. I just draw the line at smut. I won't read smut. And it has to be really well written romance because no, I, I love science fiction, horror, fantasy, um, westerns, mysteries, you name it. But I, I don't really care for smut. If you don't know what smut is, it's like really dirty porn fiction. <sighs> Not my cup of tea. Romance, meh. It has to be really well well written and then yeah. So hey, somebody's on. Oh, nobody's on. Okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed the flash book review. Um, I hope to see you again. I think I'm going to start doing these regularly on Saturday, probably Saturday morning, and and try and do one every now and then, at least one a month for now. I am everybody's super busy right now and dealing with um, what's going on in the world. And myself, I am also um, teaching. This is the first week that we go online to teach a composition course for us because I'm an English professor courses. So it's pretty busy, but I think once things settle down, I have more time to read and, and um, dive into some of these books that I'm supposed to be reviewing. I do have the magic of Devin Markin coming back up. Um, Cuentos del Cañon, Red Bird, and another couple books by Steve Carr, who's a really prolific writer. He's awesome. So uh, the magic of Devin Markin market by David Bowmore, Cuentos del Cañon by Carmen Baca and Red Bird by Steve Carr. So keep keep an eye out for those. And I hope that, you know, I know times are difficult, but I hope things are going well for you, that you're at home, say that you're fully stocked with your food and supplies um, and uh, wishing wishing the best for you. So live to the max and do something you love today. Hopefully read a book, maybe read The Shamer's Daughter. Have a wonderful day and thank you for watching.